1993, Doctor Who had been officially off the air for quite a few years. Many people are asking, what would the BBC do for this year's 30th anniversary? Today, on Doctor Who Oddity, we will explore the 90-minute film that BBC Enterprise planned, but ultimately left unproduced. BBC Enterprises, who were in charge of commercial releases such as the VHS range at the time, decided to create a special direct-to-video feature to celebrate Doctor Who's 30th anniversary. They announced the special to the public on Thursday the 10th of June 1993. Within four weeks, they cancelled the projects. Rumours of behind-the-scene drama, American influence and the BBC's attack on Doctor Who floated around the fan community. Yet the story behind this unproduced episode is a sad reflection of essentially any unproduced screen media. But that doesn't stop it from being interesting. In May 1992, a meeting was held at BBC Enterprises where they discussed the success of the Doctor Who range on the home media market and merchandise. They theorised that there was roughly 30,000 dedicated Doctor Who fans who spent roughly £150 on Doctor Who products every year. This meeting is where they first discussed the idea of making some sort of new Doctor Who content that would act as a thank you for their support. Tom Baker had discussed at a few different conventions and signings that he would consider to return to the role as the Doctor. BBC Enterprises was well aware of his comments. June 1992. A meeting was held to discuss the project further. A rough concept was made. Elements such as Tom Baker being the lead Doctor, and the other living Doctors including Sylvester McCoy would make cameos, and be a part of the plot were discussed. Adrian Rigglesford was suggested to write the project, Douglas Adams was suggested by Tom Baker, and a meeting was struck to discuss the project. Douglas politely turned the writing job down. Graham Harper was suggested as director, who had said that the script was one of the best action scripts he had ever read. In August 1992, the project was officially presented to the BBC Enterprises Home Entertainment Director. In September 1992, location scouting was performed around Surrey. Further scouting was done in December of the same year. The Dark Dimension picks up from the events of Logopolis. The Doctor has fallen from the top of the Pharos project, but this time, he didn't regenerate. Due to alien interference with time, the Fourth Doctor must fix his deviation in the timeline, or his other incarnations will be erased from time itself. This production started off as a nice way to say thank you to Doctor Who fans, whilst also making a tidy profit on top, kept finding itself in endless disasters. The production was budgeted for £200,000, with pre-production starting in October 1992 and ending in January 1993. Then filming would begin for six weeks. The edit would begin in mid-February and ready for approval in June. Re-examination of the project added another £100,000 on top of the original budget. It was new ground for BBC Enterprises due to the fact they didn't make any drama productions. That was a job for BBC Drama. The only film media they created were documentaries at the time. So when Nick Jagels, the production associate, told them their budget of £300,000 needed to be around £900,000, and that's if they were keeping it cheap, Enterprises were quite shocked. Concerns over the price tag were growing, and when asked if they could lower it to £550, Nick Jagels responded with, either you cut the script down into something no one wants to make, or go wildly over budget. To raise more funds, they approached BBC Drama. Give me your money! The drama department weren't entirely happy with Enterprises trying to act as a secondary drama unit. Enterprises said that wasn't the case, they just wanted to make this one off. Eventually, they decided to hand over £250,000 to secure broadcasting rights, the weekend of the anniversary date. Now that the project was going to be broadcast, that means all the favours they had called in to create this little project had to be re-evaluated. The production had to be a higher standard if it was to be broadcast on BBC also, and the BBC rules had to be in place. The budget of 900000 now seemed to grow to about £1.2 million. I think... I'm going to scream. They decided to send scripts to the intended principal cast without going through the proper channels. BBC Entertainment just assumed they'd agree to be in it. Colin Baker had a phone call with Graham Harper saying, I'm fond of you, Graham, and I love you deeply, but there is no way that any of us are going to do The Dark Dimension. 
It was clear that BBC Drama had no intention of putting any more money into this project, and BBC Enterprises had to find another £300,000. If BBC Enterprises used their own money, their total investment would be around £950,000, making their profit only £250,000, which is a bit of a shortcoming compared to their original profit guesstimate of £650,000. To make matters worse, well, dire, a glaring figure was overlooked. The 250000 that BBC Drama was going to give to BBC Enterprises was accidentally put in the profit margin also. This means that their actual profit was estimated at around £42,000. The team soon realised that the £42,000 would probably be spent on unexpected costs very quickly. Therefore, they decided to cancel the project. The Dark Dimension's likelihood of ever being made was slim from the beginning, but the fact that they got so close makes it an interesting footnote in Doctor Who's history, and what came out of that 30th anniversary makes an even more interesting footnote. Would you like to see the BBC animate this project officially, or a brand new project instead? Join us next week as we discuss the fan favourite Dimensions in Time. Don't forget to subscribe for more Doctor Who content.